Hello and welcome into the Sporting Jacks Report. Along with Mauricio Ruiz, I'm Cole Pepper, and the season is nearly here on Saturday. The USL Championship kicks off the 2024 season. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at five players to watch this year. We'll also be giving some shout outs to a couple of local high school soccer teams that brought home some hardware. But first, let's start with an invitation for you to join us in our first watch party of the 2024 USL Championship season. Come to Island Wing Company, the Bartram Market location on Saturday starting at 4 o'clock. We'll have the uh, Pittsburgh Riverhounds against New Mexico United or Las Vegas Lights against Memphis 901. You'll have an opportunity to get some team merchandise. You can spin the wheel for hats, t-shirts, scarves, and car magnets and stickers. And uh, spend some time with us watching the start of the USL Championship season. Great way to get to know the league a little bit better before Jacksonville enters play in a couple of years. All right, let's move from what we're going to do to watch to five players to watch this year, Mauricio. Uh, this, we talked about the teams that we think mm -hmm. uh, are the top teams, but boy, there are some players, in, many of them in new locations or, or who didn't play in the same place last year, uh, who could make a huge impact on the USL Championship race. Yeah, and this year, you know, in, in a kind of a first week of players to watch, eventually we'll talk about, you know, maybe goalkeepers to watch and young players to watch. But everyone wants to know who the goal scorers are, mm -hmm. right? And every team is seeking the goal scorers. If the, if the goal scorer is doing well, if they're on a hot streak, typically correlates to the team doing well. Because um, you can give up a couple goals if you trust that you're going to get those goals back. It gives a sense of confidence. So a lot of teams in the league this year went out looking what they do for every year. How do I boost my team? How do I boost my offense? And really, the fans love that, right? It's great to have a defensive presence to your team. But how do you make your team more offensive? How do you score goals, which is the point of soccer. So, so, so we have five players that different that have changed jerseys. One of them that's coming back into the same jerseys, but it's been out. But, but I really want to start with Justin Dillon, right? He's a player that's had Seattle Sounders product um, moved into the, into the into the USL. Had a really great stint with um, with San Antonio when they won, and now he's moving clubs, staying in Texas, but a little bit further south in El Paso. And El Paso was a club with a new coach last year that was pretty good, right? You know, they kind of, they, he had a good structure, but they were missing that goal score, someone that can kind of facilitate goals for him. And we know Justin Dillon can do that, not just from scoring goals, but assisting and creating goal opportunities for, for his teammates. He's one to watch. Another one who certainly did it last year is Albert Dequa, the 2023 Golden Boot winner with Pittsburgh. Now with expansion in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. they're trying to make a, a splash here in the league. Here's a guy who scored 36 goals in 82 appearances mm -hmm. Uh, in his time with the Riverhounds, uh, he has a goal scorer's pedigree. Well, and he's just, I mean, he's young. Mm -hmm. So 36 goals, but 22 last year, right? So most of his goals have really come in last year's season. That's why he won the Golden Boot. Um, and he hasn't been in preseason with Rhode Island, as I just recently found out. I thought he was. So I think he might start a little bit slow mm -hmm. because he takes a while. He's still a young player. He has to be a feel. But he was brought into the Royal Island team as he was built around having a dynamic goal scorer. They also have J.J. Williams that came mm -hmm. from, from Tampa Bay. A, a more of a, a producer for others. JJ is not known for his finishing prowess, even though 12 goals last year, 12, 15 goals last year. But, but Dico, if you have that one two punch combination, Dico can do really, really well. And leaving Pittsburgh as the Golden Boot winner uh, into a brand new, but he's a player that everyone in the league will be watching. Another guy who certainly has had his success at this level is Leo Fernandez. Last year, coming off a, an MVP season. Preseason injury to his Achilles mm -hmm. cost him the entire 2023 season. He's back with the Tampa Bay Rowdies this year. At 32 years of age, we'll see how he bounces back, but 36 goals and 142 appearances for the Rowdies since 2017. Uh, he certainly has proven in the past that he can find ways to score goals. Yeah, and I think the league, you know, are waiting to see, you know, new coaching staff, a bit of a new team, but a lot of retention over in Tampa. But he's a guy that not only is a goal scorer, but he kind of operates that underneath that false nine, number 10. He can kind of, you know, uh, float into spaces. He creates, he makes all the players better. Ultimately, that's what Leo, you know, that's what Leo does. And last year, down the stretch, when they kind of blocked off some of their attacking, who could break, who could unlock the game? And I think Leo can do that. Mm -hmm. Coming back, as you mentioned, a whole year out. Does he come back into that game fitness just yet? But he's an exciting player. 32 is a veteran, but I guarantee he's got a lot to prove. And he just rested his muscles a little bit, even though his Achilles is recovering. I guarantee he's going to look like a 25-year-old coming out there this year. Because they might wind up paying dividends long-term for his career to have taken right. a year off. Uh, not that he was looking for it, but it happened. Next up is Romario Williams at Hartford. Scored 15 goals in 29 matches for Colorado Springs 
last season. This is a guy you're very familiar with. Yeah, I'm familiar with, with Romario, and really everywhere he's go he goes, he scores, mm -hmm. right? And he's always looking for the next opportunity. Romario, number three draft in MLS, um, went into a situation with Montreal where they got drugged by the same year, kind of fell into the USL, and really look at his numbers. Everywhere he's gone, he's a 10-plus goal season, and he did the same thing with Colorado switchbacks last year. Interesting move to Hartford. I think Hartford, new organization, Coach Burke kind of coming in there, want to bring in veterans that can score goals. And Romario, he's done that for the battery. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's done that even with his time in Atlanta when he won an MLS Cup. Um, and he certainly did that last year with switchbacks. So it's a player that you can account for, 10 plus goals. And if he has a breakout as he has in the past, he can be a guy that could, should be contained for Golden Boot as well. Some of these players played in other USL championship teams last year. Our fifth player to watch, Abu Donladi, Played last year in Albania, so that's a, a huge change, but somebody who uh, has played domestically, uh, UCLA product, 13 goals and 86 appearances with Minnesota United over the mm -hmm. course of uh, parts of five seasons, had a stint with Nashville, sandwich in there. Uh, but this is a guy who you really think could make a difference this season. Yeah, I mean, if you look at New Mexico's roster, they changed their roster over. They made probably one of the more exciting rosters. If you look at just player on, on, on paper, they're going to be a really attacking team. Now, they can give up two, three goals, uh, but they're going to score four or five. And he's, he kind of fits that puzzle. He completes the puzzle offensively for them. A lot of really dynamic players out wide, good players underneath to give them the ball. So they now finally have someone on top of that tree that can put the ball away. And he's a player that is still young, Prove, you know, needs to prove himself, has 100 over games here in the U.S. in his professional career. And New Mexico, as, as fun of a team that they're going to be going forward, having someone like Abu to finish with experience, he's dangerous. He looks dangerous. He steps on the field. He looks like there's an additional person on the field. He, they're going to be fun to watch, uh, whether they get going early or not. But he certainly completes that puzzle for them. All right, those are five players to watch in the goal scorers category. We'll be talking about young players and goalkeepers uh, as we get a little deeper into the start of the season, which again starts on Saturday with a, a full slate of games in the USL Championship. Become a member of Sporting Jacks. It's absolutely free. Just go to SportingJacks.com and sign up. You get discounts on Sporting Jacks official club merchandise, invitations to extend uh, to attend exclusive insider events, automatic entry into competitions for a chance to win special prizes and experiences, and you'll receive the monthly Sporting Jacks email newsletter. Plus, you can place a deposit on season tickets and receive first access to seats and a special limited edition Sporting Jacks founding member pin. Just go to SportingJacks.com to sign up. Also need to give some shout outs to a couple of great high school soccer teams, two state champions right here in our area. Uh, at the 6A level, the Ponte Vedra girls, uh, a, a remarkable season, mm -hmm. just one loss and one draw, 23 wins across the entire year for Dave Silverberg's uh, group. Fourth. Uh, championship in school history mm -hmm. and uh, in the finals you had Hadley Conway, Jenny Deary and L. Anderson all scoring mm -hmm. for the Sharks and uh, they are as uh, good a team as you're gonna see in girls high school soccer. They're, they're just stacked if you look at the you know if you look at club soccer allowing them to play you know high school soccer they just pretty much have a lot of the top players not all of them pretty pretty spread out as we have other really quality high school teams here in North Florida but they're just stocked and you know from our community here the people that respect and understand girls soccer they have a really good shot of being national champions this year that's big also winning the 7-8 title is Creekside the Knights beat Boca Raton 2-1 16-1-2 -1 on the year for Creekside winning their second championship in three seasons under coach Joe Soto uh, Chloe Iliff and Sarah Weisberg getting the goals in the finals uh, boy you talk about those two champions You've, we've had champions from Bartram Trail and from St. John's Country Day, of course, that uh, uh, is always contending. Just the level of girls soccer in our area, we, we continue to marvel at it. Yeah, absolutely. And Creekside, and once they got through you know, Bartram Trail, which probably you could have argued that should have, that could have been the final. Uh, big rivalry. I mean, they're only a couple miles away from mm -hmm. each other. But once they got through that, but to your point, there's the, the, the level of girls soccer here in this community, we had... Three out of the seven classes in St. John's Country Day being one that lost in the final, kind of getting upset, 18 to zero shot mm. difference, the, the difference in that game. Uh, play the game 10 more times, we'll probably have three state champions. But just being represented and just having so many that were there towards the end really speaks highly to our community and to girls soccer in this region. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the water, but we produce uh, high-level girls soccer in this area, which bodes really well as the Super League is starting this year. Yep. We start identifying and bringing those girls together to really create an unbelievable, um, you know, youth and academy environment 
for when we launch our, our Super League team. Well, there's no doubt about it. We'll continue to talk about the uh, girls' soccer in our area, boys' high school soccer, as well as the whole path all the way up to the pros with the USL Championship, the USL Super League. And we'll do so on the Sporting Pod. You can find it anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Last episode, uh, we're talking about the USL National Broadcasting deal and how they impact uh, Sporting Jacks in the future. We also discussed soccer documentaries, shows like Welcome to Wrexham and Ted Lasso, not a documentary show, uh, and the impact on the sport. Find the Sporting Pod anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. For Mauricio Ruiz, I'm Cole Pepper. Thanks so much for joining us right here on the Sporting Jacks Report.